This book is called Little Tim and the Brave Sea Captain by Edward Ardizzone. Little Tim lived in a house by the sea. He wanted very much to be a sailor. When it was fine, he spent the day on the beach, playing in and out of boats and talking to his friend, the old boatman. It was the old boatman who taught him to make special knots that sailors make and many other things about the sea and ships. Sometimes Tim would astonish his parents by saying, there's a cunarder, or look at the barkentine on the port bow below. <laughs> when it was wet or too cold or rough to lay on the beach, Tim would visit his old friend, Captain McPhee. The captain would tell him about his voyages and sometimes give him a sip of his grog, which made Tim want to be a sailor worse than ever. But alas for Tim's hopes, when he asked his mother and father if he could be a sailor, they laughed and said he was much too young and must wait for years and years until he was a grown-up. That made Tim very sad. In fact, he was so sad that he resolved the first opportunity at the first opportunity to run away to sea. Now, one day, the old boatman told Tim that he was going out on his motorboat to a steamer which was anchored in the bay. Would Tim like to come too and lend him a hand with the boat? Tim was overjoyed. Oh, I'd love to. The boatman went, out, went on to say that the captain of the steamer was an old friend of his, and as the steamer was about to sail, he wanted to say, goodbye to him. <laughs> Sorry, I just... As the steamer, the boatman went on to say that the captain of the steamer was an old friend of his, and as the steamer was about to sail, he wanted to say goodbye to him. Tim made himself very useful, helping to stow gear in the boat and fill the gas tank to make it ready to go to sea. When this was done, the boatman said, Come give a shove, my lad, and they both pushed the boat down the shingle beach into the water and then clambered on the boat, and off they went. What an adventure for Tim. It was a lovely day. The sea was blue, and the little waves danced and sparkled in the sunshine. Tim got more and more excited as they neared the steamer, and as he had never been, in, since he'd never been in one before, very exciting. When they arrived alongside, they clambered on board. Tim was left on deck while the boatman went to see the captain who was in his cabin. Now, Tim had a great idea. He would hide, and when the boatman left, not seeing Tim, he would forget all about him. He wasn't supposed to do that. He was supposed to wait right here. Uh -oh. He would forget all about him. And that is exactly what happened. Off went the boatman and away went the steamer with Tim on board. This is Tim saying, ow, ow, you're hurting me. 
When Tim thought there was no chance of being put on shore, he showed himself to a sailor. Oi, said the sailor, what are you doing here? Come along with me, lad. The captain will have something to say to you. When, captain, when the captain saw Tim, he was furious, and he said Tim was a stowaway and must be made to work his passage. So they gave Tim a pail and a scrubbing brush. Tim was in trouble. They made him scrub the deck, which Tim found very hard work. It made his back ache and it made his fingers sore. He cried quite a lot and he wished he'd never run away to sea. After what seemed like hours to Tim, the sailor came and said he could stop work. He said, well done, my lad. And that he had not done too badly for a lad of his size. And then he took Tim to the galley where the cook gave him a mug of cocoa. Tim felt better after the cocoa, and when the sailor found him a bunk, he climbed in and he was soon fast asleep. He was so tired he did not even bother to take off his clothes. Tim soon got accustomed to life on board, and as he was a bright boy and always ready to make himself useful, it was not long before he became popular with the crew. Even the captain said he was not too bad for a stowaway. And here he's saying, he seems to be quite a useful boy. Thank you, my lad. Oops. Tim's best friend was the cook, who was a family man. Tim would help him peel potatoes and wash up and tidy the galley. And in return, the cook would give Tim any nice, tid any nice tidbits that were going. Oh, okay, so he just gave him little snacks. <clears throat> Besides helping the cook, Tim would run errands and do all sorts of odd jobs, such as taking the captain his dinner and the second mate his grog and helping the man at the wheel. and sewing on buttons on the sailor's trousers. There he is helping the man with the wheel. There he is sewing buttons. Wow, Tim had to work hard. <gasps> One morning, the wind started to blow hard and the sea became rough, which made the steamer rock like anything. At first, Tim rather enjoyed this. It excited him to watch the big waves and to see the crew hurrying about the deck, making everything shipshape and secure. But alas, Tim soon began to feel sick, and when he went down to the galley, he could not eat any of the tidbits that the cook gave him. No snacks for him. His tummy didn't feel good. All that day it blew harder and harder, and the sea became rougher and rougher, till by nightfall it was blowing a terrible gale. Poor Tim felt so sick that all he could do was creep into his bunk and lie there, wishing he had never gone to sea. It probably felt like this. That would make me seasick. In the middle of the night, there was a terrible crash. The ship had struck a rock and it lay on its side with great waves pouring over it. The sailors rushed on deck shouting, we are sinking to the boats, to the boats. With great difficulty, they launched the boats and away they went in the raging sea. But, they had all quite forgotten about Tim. He was so small and frightened that nobody had noticed him. <gasps> Tim crept onto the bridge where, the where he found the captain who refused to leave his ship. Hello, my lad, said the captain. 
Come stop crying and be a brave boy. We are bound for Davy Jones' locker and tears won't help us now. So Tim dried his eyes and tried not to be too frightened. He felt he would not mind going anywhere with the captain, even to Davy Jones' locker. They stood hand in hand and waited for the end. A little scary. Just as they were about to sink beneath the waves, Tim gave a great cry. We're saved! We're saved! <gasps> he had seen a lifeboat coming to rescue them. The lifeboat came alongside and a lifeline was thrown to them. Down the lifeline first, Tim and then the captain were drawn to safety. But only just in time. Hardly had they left the steamer when it sank beneath the waves. Now followed a terrible journey through the raging sea. Oh, more waves. The lifeboat was tossed about like a cork by the great waves which often dashed over the side and soaked them to the skin. It was many hours before they neared land and all were very cold and very tired. When the lifeboat came into the harbor, the crowd which had gathered on the quay to watch its return gave a great cheer. They had seen Tim and the captain and had realized that the lifeboat had made a gallant rescue. As soon as the lifeboat had moored beside the, quay, the quay, Tim was lifted out and he and the captain were taken to the nearest house. Do you see Tim? He's so little. Here they were wrapped in blankets and sat in front of a fire with their feet in tubs of hot water. They were also given cups of hot cocoa and were soon nice and warm, both inside and out. Once they were warm right through, they were put to bed. They were still very tired from their terrible adventure, so they slept for hours and hours. Whenever they woke up, when they woke up the next morning, however, they both, both felt well rested and were glad to be alive and well. Whew. Tim hurried to send a telegram to his parents saying that he was taking the train home and that the captain was coming too. Then he and the captain, after thanking the lifeboat men and the kind people who had put them up, went to the station and caught their train. On the platform, they were surprised to see a large crowd waiting to see them off. Among the crowd were many ladies who kissed Tim and gave him chocolate and fruit to eat on his journey. Tim felt very excited and could not help feeling a little bit of a hero. But Tim became even more excited as the train neared his hometown. He had his nose glued to the window all the time, looking out for familiar places and pointing them out to the captain when he saw them. Tim's parents were at the garden gate when he arrived. Captain McPhee and the boatmen were there too. You can imagine how pleased Tim was to see his father and mother and his old friends again. The captain told Tim's parents all about their adventures and how brave Tim had been and he asked them if they would let Tim come with him on his next voyage, as he felt that Tim had the makings of a fine sailor. Tim was very pleased and happy to hear his parents say yes. 
The lifeboatmen were pleased too as they were presented by the mayor with medals for their bravery. And that is the end. That is the end of a good story. I liked it. I hope you did too. It was long, but pretty exciting. Love you. Mwah.